Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial. I am the Dids, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make something similar to this. I made this the other day. I saw a couple examples similar to this, and I thought, I think this is really cool looking, and I'm going to try to make this myself. Make a perfect little intro for myself. Perfect thing to show to professional companies, things of that nature. It's a good thing to put on your portfolio. So today I'm going to show you kind of how to do this. I'm not going to go through every single step because it's a lot of just re repetition going through the same thing over and over and over again. So we're going to call this final comp. My P button's a little off key, no pun intended. So if you hear me bashing it, that is why. We're going to make a new solid straight off. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color it is. We're just going to make sure that's the comp size, which is 1280 by 720. Click OK. We're going to go to ramp. We're going to drag that onto the solid. Switch this to, to radial ramp. And we're going to play around with the colors. Let's do a black and white motif. So we're going to do a medium dark gray. And then we're going to do a little bit almost black. Then you can play around with this to get a desired effect. And, and you can see how that works out very nicely like that. So that's that. What we're going to do next is we are going to make a brand new solid. And this is going to be the particles in the background. So go to particle. Just type in particle. And all of what I'm teaching you is all found straight within After Effects. We're going to go to Particle World, go to Grids and Guides, and uncheck everything. You do not need any of this. So once that's done, you see that it's just kind of this here stuff. And you see that it takes a little bit to, to birth, as they call it. So what you can do is you can just take this here, slide it straight over until you get it so that it's birthed. You can extend this out. Hold shift to constrain and it'll snap right to the end. And then it's right from the get go spurting out particles. So, birth rate you can change, you can make them more, you can make them less. I'm going to decrease it to about point, point 0.9. Then, the longevity you can keep as is. Uh, you can play around with that as well, it'll make them last longer, which you can see the color changes here. There's a, a red death color by default and a yellow birth color. So I'm going to leave that at default one second. Physics. Let's start with physics. Explosive works. Gravity. We're going to change to negative point. I think I did point uh, zero one five because that slowly, gradually makes it go up. Let's try point one, negative point one, mind you. All right. So that looks good. Producer. Let's change the position of the Y so that it's down below the the composition. We can change the longevity made a 1.5 so that they kind of stick around a little bit longer. Birth rate you can choose up. Now what we're going to change, you can see that it doesn't necessarily go all the way. If that's what you're looking for, then keep it as that. But for me, I'm going to um, we're going to change the Y radius so that it moves up a little bit and covers the whole composition. The Z radius, I just like to increase a little bit to give a little bit more depth. And the X radius, I like to increase just so that it doesn't look like it's just going straight up, but it kind of expands a little bit more to cover the whole composition. So, like I said, that's good. You can see that it it moves up and the gravity moves up. So essentially, this is going to be the upward particle that you saw in the example. So that's good for the physics. The producer is pretty good. We can go back and change these things. Now we're going to go to the particle, faded sphere, and this is sadly becoming a bit of a particle world tutorial but we'll keep this part short you can change the colors I think what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna do a blue and I kinda like how this purple is so I'm actually gonna just keep it like that I, I really like how that looks let's change this maybe to uh, a bit more of a blue I really actually like that so max opacity and size variation I've noticed that if you keep them at default kind of works better just trust me on that the max opacity is too unoriginal, so we'll just keep it to 70. And size variation, I don't know, I just, you can, I, yeah, I guess you can bump this up. Just change the size of these particles. I always like to turn down the death size a little bit so that you can kind of get a sense of when they're dying and where they're dying. And you can see how this kind of moves up and it gives a very nice colorful effect. I am going to turn the opacity down to about 15 here. You can barely see the particles, and eh, we'll bump it up a little bit. 
maybe 25. You can barely see the particles, but yet they're there. You know that they're there, and you can see this this really cool effect of of this snowfall. So it looks really fast, and you can change it with the with the gravity settings, the velocity. But I find it a lot easier if you just right click, go to time, time stretch, and then I like to hit 300. Now you'll notice that slows it down to a third of its speed and it's it's going a lot slower granted the frame rate's not perfect but if even if you go back it still is going a lot slower and it works a lot more effectively in my humble opinion so next up we are going to everything else here is good so you have your background and and everything of that nature completed next up we are going to make the first text I'm going to do uh, let me do these question marks. Um, I'll do this here. The YouTube. I'm not going to put an actual YouTube logo in. Uh, I think you guys can get the gist to find a transparent YouTube logo and so on and so forth. So we're just going to do some text. We're going to name this tutorial text. And I actually like I like the uh, the font and and things of like that. You can find a good font. Actually, I'm going to use Bebes Nue, or however you want to, want to pronounce that. So we're just going to leave that as is. I am a fan of the Align tool instead of the Title Action Safe tool. They do the same thing, you just have to manually input the Title Action Safe. So we're going to bump this up, and we are going to make a second text layer. And here's a little bit of typography you can see that it's not necessarily perfect in size comparison so what I always do is I like to uh, increase the size so that they're kind of the same size and and again this is kind of typology 101 a little bit or typo typology typography 101 a little bit but you can kinda of see how that looks a little bit more professional and and looks a, a bit better so now that we have these two positioned we need to have them slide in so to do that we are going to make them both 3D. Now, as you notice in my example, they kind of bounce. They come in, they bounce a little bit, wiggle jiggle, so on and so forth. So to get that effect, I'll copy this this link and put it in the description of the video. I use this here initial bounce, inertial bounce. You can copy this and then what you do is you hit rotation, so R on the keyboard. Let's do this one on the X axis. Find that point where it becomes invisible, and it doesn't have to be perfect because, and this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but bear with me. That first frame, the frame that's currently frozen, is the first frame. So the frame that happens before this would act as if nothing is on the playing board. So this first frame that it's showing up like this is okay and it's it's a little bit hard to see in here but a lot of the times let me see if I can find it there were times see here it's blank so here's the frame before and then you can kind of see how I mean this is a couple frames advanced but the same thing similar happened to me in that situation so that's okay that it's like that so you want a keyframe then hold down alt and click on that stopwatch paste that in and it is all there don't worry and you can change the decay the frequency the amplitude and stuff to that nature to get your desired effect but that's good for now then we're gonna go forward I did 15 frames in my last one you can do 25 you can do whatever you choose change that to zero so then what that does is it comes in and then you can see it it bounces and wiggles a little bit and I'm gonna do the same thing to the tutorial text layer rotation tool let's do the y-axis and again you have to find that sweet spot and since you really can't get it perfect that'll be fine keyframe it you can do this in any order you can copy this and then click the stopwatch it doesn't make a difference so then go to the you can hold shift and snap to that keyframe zero and we have ourselves some bouncing text. It's a little bit harder to tell this text layer because of the fact that it's going forward and backward a little bit. I mean, the 
the y-axis is a little bit more noticeable because it's coming away it's, it's hard to explain but you see how this is extending a little bit more than this and here I'm I'm touching my monitor so you guys can't really see but this extends longer than this so do that fact this will make more of a difference than this because this height is not as much as this width but you can play around with the the amplitude and the frequency and stuff to to fix that so guys I hope that you enjoyed this uh, let me just show you really quick how to how at least I spanned it out I took both of these layers pre-composed them just name it tutorial then what I did is I I like this here CC light burst I really like this this effect again everything's preset with an after effects you see this right away I set it to zero and zero keyframe both of those go forward about 15 frames set it back to 150 you can play around with these values as well and then I also let me uh, zoom in here alt plus and minus although it didn't seem to work oh control eh, maybe not whatever you can drag this into having a brain fart my apologies okay so here's two two seconds I'm gonna keyframe the opacity at 100 and then at 15 keyframe down to zero so I'm gonna give you guys a quick RAM preview show you guys exactly what you just saw I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something if you can use this in anything or if you want me to make any graphics for you just uh, leave a comment below or contact me at Dids Editing is my Skype or the Eric Didier at gmail.com is my email address. Drop a like in this video. It would be much appreciated. Share this with your friends and I really want to get into doing tutorials like this more often. So if you enjoyed this and you feel like you can use this, comment below, share it with your friends. And other than that, guys, have a wonderful day.